What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. A long while back, over two years to be precise, I took a look at Clay Fighter 63 in the third for the Nintendo 64. So I thought, you know what? Let's revisit this game and still see if it's still worth picking up and playing today and adding to your Nintendo 64 collection. Clay Fighter 63 and a third and its sequel, Clay Fighter's Sculptor's Cut, is the final installment by the de developer and publisher Interplay. It was originally released on October 23rd, 1997. And sadly, this game and this entire series of games went from promising new 64 fighting game to absolutely garbage bin with the exception of course being sculptor's cut being one of the most expensive not necessarily the rarest titles on the nintendo 64. the big issue that i've heard most people complain about was clay fighter 63 and the third is the game's sense of humor it is a very i guess you would say almost toilet bowl sense of humor or maybe sailor mentality its dialogue is definitely unique to itself it's one of those things that either you're gonna really enjoy it and probably get a lot of laughs out of it or it's just not your cup of tea when you start off the game there's a total of nine characters to choose from and they are bad mr frosty the blob bonkers kung pao t hoppy harry hudan Taffy and Icky by Clay and Earthworm Jim. You can also unlock three other characters through the secret menus being Boogerman, Sumo Santa, or the main boss of the game, Dr. Kiln. In this game, every single character has their own unique special attacks, combos, as well as taunts that could be performed either at the beginning of the game or even during if you like. Such as with Harry Houdan, He'll yell, cluck you, which obviously you should know what that means. Or, say for instance, my favorite character, Icky by Clay, he'll say, welcome to my nightmare. So each of them definitely have their own unique personality. The Clay Fighters game itself is a 3D fighting game that's reminiscent in a lot of ways of a game like, say, Killer Instinct. Each character has weak medium and strong attacks and punches and you have to input these attacks as well as directional inputs on the control joist so that you can get combos. If you've time them right you can use things called auto linkers so you can chain your combos together with a power meter that's at the top right. It definitely takes a lot of practice to be able to pull off some of these higher end chains and don't even get me started on the insane combos. If you want to see those I recommend just watching a YouTube video. But if you're not, if you're like me and you just want to pick the game up and play for a few minutes, oh no, I think you can find some neat enjoyment. Now let's, next, let's touch on the music and sound effects. Overall, the music for this game isn't bad. And each of the various attacks that are in the game, as well as the various special attacks, all have a certain amount of weight and oomph to them. So they definitely add with each of those characters feeling like they have their own personality. The biggest factor and biggest gripe that I have with this game is just really the clarity of the game and also just the backgrounds. I mean, some of the stages are cool to look at in the foregrounds, but the backgrounds are just so blah, dreary. It, this game definitely suffers from being the clay model animation and not really any higher quality. So let's finally answer the question. Is Clay Fighter 63 and a third worth picking up and adding to your collection today? All in all, with the amount of fighting games on the Nintendo 64, I'd say if you enjoy this game's sense of humor, then yeah, go ahead, give this game a try. But if you're not really a big fighting game fan, or you don't particularly care for this game's kind of jarring sense of humor, I'd say stay away. Thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time.